All right, everyone, so for day two, we have an example that we're striving toward. I show that site, vmcink.net slash marvel. If you look at it on a desktop computer, you will see this project, rollovers, text, graphics. If you look at it on a mobile device, which is a tall, thin device, for example, then you get a different sort of layout, where the layout conforms to a mobile device, mobile-friendly. This is what we're going to create. I have the pictures for you, the text we can make up, but the idea is to create this project. And going from last time to this time may seem like a big jump, but it's not really, because it just depends on the right tags, the right tag for the right task putting all the tags, the proper tags together, then you get this. But breaking it all down behind the scenes, of course, it's just HTML and CSS. There's nothing fancy here yet of JavaScript. Even these rollovers like that, that doesn't require anything special like JavaScript. This is uh, plain old CSS. This is what we're going to strive toward. Let's see how far we get to it today and probably spend some time next time as well. We're going to start off with our blank notepad file. So go ahead and go to your start menu and launch Notepad++. Start menu, Notepad++. A couple of times we're going to start from scratch with an empty document, but then eventually I don't want to start over every single time. We're going to start with a starting point or a, a template. But in the beginning we'll start over with a blank document, just for this practice. And the first thing I want to do after you open Notepad++, let's go to File, Save As. I'm going to save this. File, Save As. You should have a flash drive, hopefully. If you don't, you can save temporarily to the desktop. But you will um, lose your work if you don't take it with you. I'm saving mine to my flash drive. I'm going to call this uh, marvel.html. So you'll see as we go through this course, one of my hobbies is uh, reading and collecting comic books. I just realized that this year is been, has been 30 years that I've been reading and collecting comics. Hard to believe. So this project here is going to be about Marvel Comics, Spider-Man, and the like. This, of course, can be shaped to anything because the structure, a two-column layout with rollovers, with mobile-friendly features that conform to a mobile device, that structure can be repurposed to many things, many projects. We're creating a project of uh, a comic book blog website. And first we're focusing on a website because once we get these ideas down, we'll be able to see that with the, the power of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, we will then relatively easily be able to then convert that into mobile projects. Mobile projects that can then access a camera of a device, um, create database content, uh, access the phone features of a device, you know, make a phone call, uh, text messaging, and all the things that a mobile device can do, we can access those features eventually via HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But starting point, a basic HTML project. We're going to need to create, again, an HTML5 compliant document. So our very first line will always be the doc type of HTML, HTML5, don't write the 5, of course. That's how we start off. Next is the tag for HTML, and it has a closing tag. Closing tag, remember, is the slash. Inside of the HTML block, we need a head and we need a body. The head content, the body content. So inside of HTML, head tags and body tag, body tags. 
99% of the time we have the slash to close the tag. The few times that we don't, like doc type and image and break, I'll make a note, of course. We said last time that this tabbing is superfluous. It's unnecessary for the web browser to process, but it's very useful for us for visibility. I can see things that are indented in a block. Conceptually, they're together, and I can then easily find and edit the pieces. Back in the head, we didn't talk about this tag before. This is the meta tag. Meta tag is one of the cases that does not have a pair. It's simply an opening tag, like the image tag. The image tag didn't have a pair, but what did the image tag have in order for it to work properly? Attributes. We had source. That was an attribute. We need attributes for this meta tag for it to fully be defined. So inside of the meta tag, space, chrset, the syntax of an attribute in a tag is then equals quote end quote. Don't forget that ending quote or the whole app will break. If you forget this ending quote, everything then is part of that attribute because you never close that tag and everything gets ignored. So literally one wrong character right here can break your whole 500 line app. So make sure you close your tags. And when I teach programming, I always talk about and insist that you open and close elements first before filling in details. It's very easy. You saw that I wrote head and then close head. I could have started writing head and then meta and then etc. etc. But then I might have forgotten to close head. If I didn't close head, that'd be a problem. If I started a p tag and never closed the p tag, that could be a problem. So when I write code, we ju you just saw me write like that. You saw me write, hopefully, the opening and closing angle brackets first. Then I went in with the meta, and then I wrote the car set, quote, end quote, because I'm going to write some stuff here, and if I forget to close that, the whole app is broken. So whenever there's pairs of things, close the pair, and then fill in the details. As you get practice, maybe you can skip that. But I would recommend, especially as a beginner, always close your pairs of tags or elements so that you don't make a mistake later. Inside the quotes, UTF-8. We didn't talk about this tag before. This is a meta tag. This is a tag that is beyond the term meta, metaphysical, beyond the physical. Uh, meta, it's beyond. It's not in the main body. It's not visible to your users but it's part of the project, and this is the car set, sometimes pronounced char set, car set, character set, car set, however you want to pronounce it, car set, the set of characters, the set of alphabets that I can use. We never defined it last time, and the project worked fine. But here I want to say, let's use the character set, UTF-8, I forget what that one stands for, but it's basically all the alphabets of the world. If I want to use English letters, Spanish letters, Japanese letters, Hebrew letters, etc., they're all contained in this standard. So here I'm saying my project should have the ability to use all of the characters of this set. There are many sets out there, but this is a very common one. That'd be a good opportunity to write a note meta tag that defines the full range of characters we may use. The full set of characters we may use. <coughs> Letters and numbers, symbols, Comment. I wrote that a bit quickly, but remember the comment starts this way, one of the most unique tags, which has a pair. So angle bracket exclamation dash dash, and then dash dash angle bracket. In between I have the, the note. If I didn't close 
my comment, everything else beyond that is green, meaning it's still part of a comment, meaning it then gets deactivated. So we can always close your pairs. So with this, we would be able to write like the upside down exclamation point, the accented E, you know, other like Latin characters, Japanese characters. This is to be more most standards compliant, this meta car set. Next line, line five. Title. The title tag. I'll keep that on one line simply because it's going to be just one short phrase. I like to break up tags into multiple lines when I have multiple elements. But here I'll just write Marvel blog, the Marvel blog. That will be the name of this project. Where did the, uh, the sign-in sheet, the, the roster, end? All right, so this is what we've got in the head. We'll add other things a little bit later once we get more complex like CSS. Let's go inside the body tab. You saw the example on the web browser. There's a lot of design going on. There's a lot of design going on. There was like a background graphic, some header graphic, a sidebar and all of that, we need to then divide up the screen into sections, into pieces, a side piece, a side section, a bottom section. We need to make divisions. We need to divide up the screen. So we've got a tag called div, which has a pair. Div for division. We've divided the screen. We're going to divide the screen we're going to have a background graphic of those stars. And on top of that, the main content. So the main content is going to be in this div, because in the body, I could add the graphic of the stars. Inside of div, header tag, which has a pair. There's a tag to divide up your document. Up for head, header content at the top, there's a tag for footer content at the bottom, there's a tag for side. There isn't actually kind of a tag specifically for like the whole content, so to speak. So that's why we're using div. Div is an older tag that has existed probably since the beginning of HTML, since around 1990, 1991 or so. A tag like header is a more modern tag that was designed to include content up on the top of the screen. Inside of header, h1 tag. I'll write again the Marvel blog. Same text, uh, title will appear up on the tab of the web browser. But then anything in the body actually appears in the main viewport, the main visible area. Let's save and check it in the web browser. The process, remember, is saving and then run. Launch any web browser you like. I'm going to go with Firefox since, simply because it's the top one that I see first. And the keyboard shortcut to that is Control-Alt-Shift-X. Run it in the browser. It's not too exciting at the moment.
once you run it, at least you could see if any problems. So it should look something like that. Again, very boring, but we've got the name of the blog of the site right there in the visible area. This is the viewport. You can view this viewport. And then the meta tag is not visible anywhere. That car set is not visible anywhere, but it's used in the project. And then title is up on the tab. The header is going to be a section at the top which has the name of the site and then also the links. We're not going to create every single screen, but we have this home screen. We have a screen over of about. We have a screen for contact or something. We have different screens. Therefore, we need links. A link from this home screen to the about screen. We need a nav bar. So still inside of the header after the heading one. I'm going to create a nav bar here, and there's a tag for that. Nav. Make sure you're in the header, the topmost area, the topmost section or division of the screen. You've got the title of the site, and then in here will be a list of links. Home screen, about screen, etc. Yes? Is there a rule that the, the margin, I'll just set the margin, the kind of just like the always tag and then price and all that? Here or in, or in, or in, in the, when you're making your website? Not not exactly rules, but there are there are built-in margins. Automatically, body has some margin and header has some margin, which we can change. So as for what works, it's really what looks best and what works best. If you need a little bit of margin, we will be able to program that. If you need a lot for style, we can program that. So there's no actual like. Make sure it always looks like this. Like oftentimes, if you've got a printout, you have one-inch margins around. We could do that with our projects, but it really depends aesthetically what we'd like to do. But we can definitely alter that as, as we go on. This is a nav element. I'm going to tab in here, and this is a list of links that we can go to. A list of links, so this will be an unordered list. In the beginning, this project will look very basic, and that's the purpose of HTML, a structure then the purpose of CSS is a design. So we're not going to worry too much that in the beginning all of this looks very boring. When we get into CSS, that's when it'll look nice. Unordered list is bullet points. A bullet point is a list item. So there's an unordered list of bullet points. Here's my first bullet point. This is a nav bar in the header of the project. We'll have a home button, we'll have a heroes button, a villains button, and an about button. You can do a little copy and paste here, Oops. stick right there, close that, list item, close list item. Should have noticed it because the color didn't change. See that? If I click on this one, the colors change. If I click on this one, it didn't. I was missing a slash. So, home, heroes, villains, about. You can do a little copy and paste here. If you select that one and copy it, next line, paste, next line, paste. The point of that is it. I wrote the list item opening and closing, and then I just need to change the actual um, item villains and about. This project will have a home screen, kind of introductory, a screen where it focuses on heroes of the Marvel Universe, another screen focusing on the villains, and another screen about this website or about Marvel.
if you save and run this, it doesn't look like a navbar yet. It's pretty far from where it needs to be. But this is a list of links that eventually I'm going to click on Heroes and it'll go to a Heroes screen. If I'm, on, if I'm on the Villains screen, I can click Home and it'll come back here to the Home screen. Well, if these are supposed to be clickable to go from one screen to another, what am I missing? A link, the A tag, the anchor tag, the link. So I need to go back. I need to wrap an A tag around each of them. So if I knew that, I would have written that first, then copied and pasted. That's okay. As you continue to work, you will see your shortcuts where you can copy and paste. If you're going to do something over a few times, uh, you can see when you can copy and paste. Well, an A tag has a pair, but it needs an attribute. href equals quote, end quote. We're working on marvel.html as the home screen. Marvel.html. I need the same thing for heroes, villains, and about. We'll keep it easy. Heroes.html, villains.html, about.html. Here's another example where maybe I can copy and paste. If I select this part of the code, where it's got the A tag and the A tag, I can copy and paste here, here, and here. And I need to remember to close here, here, and here. So I can select, don't forget the opening and closing angle brackets, right click copy, paste before heroes, paste before villains, and paste before about, <coughs> and then close each of those. Open a tag, close a tag, just like I have here. Make sure you close each of those a tags. Make sure that the list item is, the, is at the furthest ends of the line, and the a tag is inside of it. are just heroes.html lowercase villains.html about.html. Pretty logical. The thing about HTML and all of this code is that at a certain point it's, uh, it, it's, it's repetitive. Not in a bad way, but it's repetitive in that it makes sense. Of course, each one is a bullet point, so they all need an li. They're all tags, so they need, I mean, they're all links, so they need the href and all of that. You just then have to change the details. Heroes.html, villains.html, and about.html. Heroes. Well, if, as long as I type it wrong everywhere, it's not an error. But heroes. Okay, so uh, checking it in the web browser should then just show that these are links. These won't work if you click. You know, if I click on heroes, it'll say file not found. It doesn't exist. That's okay for the moment. These will be broken links, but eventually I will have functional pages. I'm, I'm too far away from that, but eventually I will have a heroes.html file, villains, etc. Based on this home screen, if I design this home screen with the side column and the footer and all of that, I can then just use that as a starting point for the villains.html. I'm still a ways from the marvel.html file, but eventually we'll get there. The main area 
Let me load up the example again just to... Oh, I do have it up. Oh, no, I don't. Let me pull up the example one more time. We saw that uh, there's a main area. We, writ we wrote this part here, the Marvel blog. We just made the these links here. They don't look like this at all yet. That's coming up. Then we have an area of featured posts. Right? We're going to have an article about Spider-Man with a button to read more. Another character, read more. We're going to have a sidebar. We're going to have a footer. So we're, we're a long way from this at the moment, but we're building it up with HTML. So if we have our header section, next we need a main content section. So after header, mine is at about line 20, I've got a tag called section. There's a section where we'll have the latest articles. This is a tag that exists for a purpose. We can have different sections. When we get more complex later, we can have one section for some kind of content, another section for another kind of content. But uh, the whole point again of HTML is that there's a tag for the right, there's the right tag for the right task. Inside of section H2, we'll write featured posts. That's the first text that appears there in the main content area, Featured Posts. So we're designing the section here. Do you see that there's sort of a group, a unit, if I zoom out like this? There's a unit of content. This. This is a unit of content. There's some text and a picture related. Text and picture. It's a unit of content. We could call that an article. It's a particular article. It's a particular blog post. It's a unit of content. We have a tag for that, article. All of this, all of this is an article. So within the section, the main content section, after the featured posts, article. as a pair. The purpose of article is that we are grouping a unit of content together. And in that area, you see we had some text and a picture. So we've got some tags for pictures and we've got some tags for text. But all of that comes together as an article. Inside of article, we have figure. That's related to the picture. We'll fill in the details of picture in a moment. But we've got a, a picture with a text below it. And then next to the picture, you saw we have some headings, some extra text that says Spider-Man and a little bit about Spider-Man, and then a paragraph of text. So there's tags for that. We have H group. So figure tag to define the picture. H group. <coughs> heading group to define the text related to the picture, the heading text, the text that stands out. And then after each group, a paragraph, a plain paragraph of text.
you can sort of think of HTML as a blueprint to a building. On paper, this building is designed a certain way. This square represents the living room. This other rectangle is a bedroom. When we actually then build it with the walls and the color of the paint and the carpet and the lighting, that's CSS. That's the actual then design of it. So here, conceptually, we have one group, one unit, which has a figure, a picture, a heading group for, for text, and then a paragraph for more text. Let's work backwards. In P, here's where we could write a little bit of actual plain text. Uh, we can put gibberish here, or just to kind of make it uh, a little more complete, I'm going to write a little bit here for real. Bitten by a radioactive spider. Quick origin. Bitten by a radioactive spider. Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man. On the next line, I want to have read more. But remember, it won't make a new line if I simply press enter. How do I force a new line? Break. BR, break. Break. Read more. This is just a snippet, a little preview of what this article is. I want read more. We have a symbol of an arrow we can put here. Because we have car set UTF-8 at the very top, we can make like arrows and little symbols and such. So if we type the ampersand, letter R, capital A, RR, semicolon, that will convert into an arrow pointing to the right. This is a character code. I'm able to access that, and I can look up a list of all like 16,000 characters that I can work with. Here's one. Take a quick look at it in the web browser, save it and run it. So at least we see how the arrow looks. And then nothing else is weird. Let's see, so like that. Read more. Little arrow. We have another kind of arrow. If you actually do lowercase a, that's a different kind of arrow too. So we are kind of referring to those symbols. Symbols. We can do we can do a quick search. HTML arrows. There's a website called htmlarrows.com, and someone here put in a list of these. So there's different ways to do all of these. If we want extra symbols, there's even things like here, like yen and rupees and such. Uh, there's other symbols, and they all have a, some sort of code. Here's different ways to write it. If you wanted cent, ampersand, cent, semicolon, or this code or this code. So those, like, four, nine, nine, four, for percent is, some of them use the percent symbol, yes, so you have to write it this way. You should be able to write any one of these three. The Unicode one is, I think, for other purposes, but any one of those three, definitely the last two. Some of them have a name because it's easy to remember, ampersand pound, and I get the pound symbol. Some of them don't have an easy name, so there's a code for them. I can further look up. I can look up HTML character codes. List of HTML codes. So back on W3 School, so they've got a whole list there too. There's thousands of these. Uh, you can do like happy faces and heart symbols and arrows and so many.
And because we have car set UTF-8, we're able to access all of these symbols. If we didn't have that, the web browser might not understand what does this mean, and it ignores it. So with UTF-8 car set, all of these symbols should work. Because this is eventually going to be a link. Click read more to read more. This should be a link. Let's wrap the A tag around all of that. I want an, a link around the words read more and the arrow. Open close A tag. href will point over to spiderman.html, which doesn't exist yet, but will eventually. To give the href attribute equal to spiderman.html. <coughs> Everything has been in lowercase, and most of the time, everything that we will write will be in lowercase. When it's not, I'll point it out and why. But uh, HTML5 is basically everything should be lowercase. Yeah, we had a capital A over here, but that's something else. That should, that should then become an underlined link. It won't really work. If I click on it, it'll say broken link or something. But eventually, that will be a link to a real page. Let's back up to the H group block. In H group, this is the spot where I want to display the name of the character of this particular article and then uh, the first appearance, the comic book they were in first. So this is a group, a group of headings. We're going to use H2 again. I'll explain why in a moment. But then after that, we will use H3. The H tags are headings. When you went, uh, when everyone signed in on the attendance sheet, there was some text at the very top that defines the whole document, H1. That's what we've got here. Then there was a section where, your, where the number of enrolled that was also standing out as a heading, heading two. Then there's the uh, campus, North City. Both of, all of these lines right here, you may not be able to read it, but all of these lines right here have the same hierarchy, the same meaning. They all have the same indentation and design and such, but they all relate to the basic uh, stats of the class, the enrollment, the campus when we meet, uh, the maximum hours and such. So they all have the same heading. They all relate to the same thing. Further than down, we have other subheadings, heading 3. All of these in a horizontal line would be heading 3, because then student name, total hours, grade, and credit all relate to the same concept, H3. So here we're using an H2. We also use H2 for featured post, because conceptually, all of these articles are part of the featured posts. Within this group, we would write Spider-Man. And then related to Spider-Man is his first appearance, so then it's a heading 3. We simply don't write heading 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all the way down because it's increasing numbers. We write them because they are grouped together conceptually. So this first character, Spider-Man, we're using H3 to then say when the character first appeared. First appeared. In amazing fantasy number 15 in 1962. Spider-Man turns 55 years old this year. So the comic book is called Amazing Fantasy number 15. I want to emphasize that. I want to mark the name of that comic I want it to stand out. Oftentimes when you read an article, when you read a blog or something, and it lists the name of a book or, or a magazine or something, isn't it often italicized? Doesn't it often stand out? We have a tag for that, the emphasis tag. We want to emphasize this is the name of this book. Emphasis is EM. Let's wrap the M tag, the emphasis tag, around the name of the book structurally we're emphasizing it. Later on, visually, we can style it. 
all of these HTML tags don't have a lot of styling built in. It can look very boring. So then when we apply or employ CSS, that's when we get a good design. Yes? Um, can you explain to us, like, previous class here, you give us a note or not? And if not, I have to write my own notes. That's what I'm doing right now. Just one more thing. My emphasis is something like that. Well, I was, I was just saying that emphasis is to emphasize this uh, this magazine, this book, so it'll italicize it. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, to ask you, when you give, like, you know, last time you gave us a comment note and what you put about and such, and so that's very easy for you to do that, but this time maybe you do that or not? You mean, am I not, not going to write comments anymore? Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I will. It's just okay. that it's so fun to keep writing the actual code that I forget to write the comments. That's right, thank you. But uh, yeah, we, we'll go back. Most uh, we'll see about maybe going back after we've written the code and then kind of commenting it so that it, when it's totally there, then we can kind of define what we wrote. Okay, thank you. So uh, this will create emphasis, basically italicized, and then we can further um, define it and style it later. Is that put in the CSS? or is that just? By default, most web browsers will take emphasis and italicize it. Exactly. There's a built-in definition to these to some degree, and most browsers have a, agreed that M will be italicized. If anyone has done web design in the past, we, do, we did have a tag of bold and a tag of italics, but those have fallen out of favor because they are strictly defined. A bold tag only means bold, but an M tag for emphasis can mean many things. So we're using the more modern version. Stronger font version of bold. Mm -hmm. When we want to bold something, we can do strong with it. Let's back up to figure and set ourselves up to display a graphic. Inside of the figure, we'll type the image tag. Yes? Just uh, I'm about to do a little pause in a moment right after the picture, and then we can check people's work. So uh, for image, image tag doesn't have a pair. And we need an attribute to define the picture. Source. I've got a picture already for you to borrow that I've already sized the way that I want it and picked it to be consistent and such. This can be obviously any picture, but I've got one here. The address HTTPS slash slash vmcink dot files dot wordpress dot com so we're connecting over to a website make sure the https is there connecting to a, a website slash 2016 slash 10 slash Spider-Man. No dash on that, and then dot PNG. <coughs> One more thing, then we'll check the result, and then we'll pause to see where we're at. We've got a picture and I also want to put a caption below the picture to say you know, what the character is. So this figure block encompasses an image and its caption. So after the picture, fig caption. It has a pair 
I'll keep it on one line. This is text. This is a caption for a figure. Which figure? This one, because it's all linked together with this figure block, figure tag. And here I can just write something about that particular picture. I'll just write the amazing Spider-Man. Let's save and run this, and let's see if mine works, and then we'll uh, confirm that it looks good for everyone. So I'm going to run it. Here's what it looks like mine so far. The top text, that's the H1. Here's the nav elements. Featured post, H2. There's the picture. If it doesn't load up, I'll put the code up in a moment. You have to type that link to that picture exactly. There's the caption below the picture. Notice how it lined up with the picture. Then after that is the H2 and the H3. There's the emphasis. And there's the read more. So if I put these side by side for a moment, can't show everything at once, but here's my code so far. And I'll do a little pause here. Anyone need a little help? Here's my code so far. At any point, of course, if anyone is uh, having lots of trouble, remember to raise your hand and I'll help you out. But anyone need a little help at this point?
All right, so uh, if you uh, if I helped you out, it was probably just a little thing. You see that sometimes a misplaced angle bracket or an extra angle bracket or something causes it to behave a little funny. Sometimes you see that the opposite, that you type it wrong, but it still accepts it. Uh, HTML can be both very forgiving at times and very strict. So here's the code so far, and here's the project so far. It doesn't uh, look like our ending project at all just yet, uh, but we're starting to build this structure. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. From the example, you saw that we're going to have this. Well, eventually, we're going to have the picture on the left and the text on the right, and we're going to have a little border. That's all CSS that will come later. But you do see on the home page we also have a second article for a second character. Well, all of that is the same structure, different content. We need to then create the black cat article. Copying and pasting what we already have there of Spider-Man will save us a lot of effort, especially if it works, and then just filling in the change. So here's how I would do it. Watch me first, and then you can try it. I would simply copy all of that article and paste it right after itself, still in the section. So I've got an article that ends for Spider-Man, and an article that starts for Black Cat, and I'll fill in the details of Black Cat. Let me go back so we can try that. The easiest way, instead of typing it all over and making mistakes, is to select from article to slash article. And the start of article and mine is about line 22 to 35 or so. Article to slash article. Don't forget the last angle bracket of article. Don't forget the first angle bracket of article. <coughs> Copy the whole thing. A new line after the ending of that article and before the ending of the whole section of featured posts, paste. So now I've got an exact copy of article. But we need to change here the picture. I've got a picture called, it's all exactly the same, but it's called Black Cat. The character is the Black Cat. The character is Black Cat. First appearance I'll tell you that in a moment, and then some text, read more. So it's all the same thing, just some filled in details. For example, the link to the picture now is black cat, lowercase no spaces. The fig caption is the black cat. The H2 is black cat or anything black cat first appeared in so we'll say here inside of the emphasis the comic it's still gonna say first appeared in something the something is the comic amazing spider-man number 194 in 1979 And then as for that P right there, you can write anything you want. Anything you know about that character, if you know anything, but what I will write 
is Felicia. Party is an accomplished burglar. With a super suit. So you see here, I've changed the details of that particular article of that particular character. The structure's still the same. Article, figure, H, group, P. I'm, I made all the changes, right? Changed everything. Is the link the same? The link is different. So read more to go read blackcat.html. That document doesn't exist yet, but it will eventually. It's still going to have read more to some page. Let's see what it looks like, and if it's good, we'll take a break, and if it's not quite there, call me over. But let's see what mine looks like. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake. Here's the first uh, article, Spider-Man, and then the next article, Black Cat, the picture, and some text. That's what mine looks like so far. It's about 7.15. Let's take our first break. We'll be back at 7.25. This is when you can uh, partake and all of that. If you need any help at this point, call me over. When we come back after that, we'll start to deal with the sidebar and the footer.